mukama yebazwe uh, twebaza mukama olwekisera kino nga tuli mu masoge katusabe katondo minza ebintu byonna tuze jyoli nga tugula we mitima jaffe omoyo omtukuvu yogera ne mitima jaffe otuyigiriza amakubogo otulunga mie mu byonna byetukola ekisacho kiberewa munafe mulinya elia yesu amina uh, tebaza nyo mukama olwekisera kino nga tugabana ekigambo wa muna mwe mwenna abatulaba abatuuliriza mu ngeri zonna mukama abawe nnyonyini dala omkisa amanya sakira ronald okuva wana ku united christian center e kasubi mubweleza buno bo muntu wo munda twebaza nyo mukama kulwa ekanisa ya emmanuel church mwebale nyo okusigala nga mwagala mukama nga mnonya mukama mwebale kuyimirira era mukama akibabalire yeyongere okuba wo mukisa ntusokula misa kwange eliyo msumba wamene timu yonna jakola nayo olwo kulaba anti omulimu gwa mukama wafe gugenda mu maso mukama wenyo mukisa tuli ku topic oba subject e ya living in the word okubera matutambulira mu kigambo okukola byetukolanga tubikolera mu kigambo okubera anti bulichonna tuganye ekigambo kya katonda kitulungamye tuganye ekigambo kya katonda kiberenga ye campus je tugoberera nga che kituwa direction iyo kutambulira so betogera okubera mu kigambo ekisoka kikulu okukitegera nti the word of god is active the word of god is a living thing che kigambo kya katonda kiramu kintu ekiramu kintu ekirina obusobozi okukulaga wawo okuyita wawo okulaga uh, when we go to the book of hebrews uh, hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 uh, they will tell us let's run if you have your bible you you look into it that is hebrews chapter 4 verses uh, 12 in verse 12 of the bible says for the word of god is living and active sharper than any double edged sword it penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart so that is what the the word of god is so in whatsoever you do the word of god is a living thing is something that is active when you live by it if you walk in it if you practice it it can shift you from one level to another it can change your life it can give you another perspective it can create an attitude within you it gives you a view a world view of things when you follow the word the bible says it has the ability to penetrate even to the dividing of soul and spirit those are two things that are inseparable but the bible says that the word of god has the ability to separate even those things that seem to be inseparable things that seem to be so intertwined so when we follow the word of god in whatsoever we do we know it will help us it will be able to distinguish what is good to what is bad it will give us a spirit of discernment to tell what comes from god that and what comes from the devil it will tell us it will show us the right people and from it will distinguish the right people from the wrong people the right thing from the wrong things the right friends from wrong friends so when you cling on the word of god it will give you that guidance so here that's why it says it has that ability it will penetrate it will cut 
into the joints and marrows. It will judge even the thoughts, even the thoughts when people are just thinking. If you keep yourself in the word, you can know which thought comes from God, which thought comes from the devil, which thought is coming from your carnality, your carnal mind. So the word of God, when you place it into your life, you'll find that you'll have a discernment. You'll be able to escape a lot of traps that the devil puts across just because of the word of God. And actually, when you go to Psalms 119, Psalms 119, uh, verse 11, uh, the writer tells us in Psalms 119, verses 11, he says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I have hidden your word in my heart. It is your responsibility, it is my responsibility as people of God, as Christians, as people that follow Christ, to make sure that we hide, that we place the word of God into our hearts, into our hearts. Uh, deep down into your heart, you should have the word of God. Deep down into your heart, if you want to make consultations, if you want to know what next to do, what comes next, if you have hidden the word of God, it will give you guidance. And here he tells us that for him, he has hidden the word of God into his heart that gives him ability not to sin. Actually, the reality is there is no human being that in his own setting as a human being has the ability to do away with his sin. Like the Bible has said that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So there is no human potential. There is no person who is good enough. Uh, there is no person who is smart enough to overcome sin. But one of the things that really gives us the ability is the word of God. When we hide that word within our hearts, having the Holy Spirit with us, he enables us. He gives us the ability. He enables us not to sin. And actually, let me tell you, if you, you rise up in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year, with, with you and you don't commit any sin. Never be proud in any way. Never come up to say that you know it is my strength. I've made it. You know for me it is possible. No. What gives you ability is the word of God. It is the word of God. The word of God. So that's why when you go to the book of Joshua. Let's go to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Uh, Joshua is being commissioned by God for a journey that he's going to take and the responsibility that is ahead of him. He has to lead the children of Israel after, after the death of Moses. And then one of the things that God entrusts to him, one of the requirements, one of the things that God comes across and tells Joshua to do in order for him to prosper in order for him to be able to move on, in order for him to be able to, to withstand the challenges of life, the challenges of leadership, he, he tells him to keep the word of God. So in verse 8, Joshua chapter 1, verses 8, the Bible says, Do not let this book of the law depart from you. Uh, I beg your pardon, let me read it again. He says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So, are you... Do you want to be successful in life? Resort, decide, dedicate yourself to the word of God. To the word of God. He tells him that, you know, if you will prosper, if you'll be able to carry on the leadership burden, you ought not to allow this book to depart from your mouth. Which means with the word of God, we ought to speak it, declare it. 
declare it even when you are confronted by situations circumstances around you mountains before you uh, confusing situations circumstances is where you feel you are confused you don't know what next always be bold enough to confess the word of god confess it god is on my side god will enable me god will lead me through it i will not surrender he is on my side, therefore I will overcome. And as you do so, you will be able to see the way out. That's why God tells Joshua, but meditate, meditate on it day and night. Not just during the day, no. Not just during the night, no. But day and night, meditate. So, let me bring my question to you. What do you meditate on mostly? Mostly. What do you meditate on? Some food. You meditate on food. The, day, the moment you wake up like this, you're like, what will I have for breakfast? What will I have for between breakfast and lunch? What will I have for lunch? And then what snack will I eat after lunch before uh, evening tea? And then what will I have for supper? And you take a lot of meditation on it. How much money do I have in my pocket? You meditate a lot on that. And then some of you spend a lot of time meditating on your problems, your challenges, and you even lose peace just because you are thinking about your problems. And certainly this is what happens. The more you meditate upon that problem, the more it bulges, the more it expands within your mind, and it appears so big, it appears you will not overcome it, just because you've given it meditation. By the way, if you want to know the power of meditation, see what it does to you when you meditate on your problems when you meditate on your challenges. The more you meditate on those problems, the more they grow big, the more they increase, the more they widen. So, what if you had taken that which you do to your problems and place it on the word of God? You place it on the word of God, which says, you the head are not the tail. That word that says, I have good plans for you. And you take that, displace the problem, place that word there, and meditate on it. I have good plans for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to take you to a, another level. I have good plans. And then begin, you know, in meditation you begin to do what we call imaginations. You see yourself, you picture yourself in that which you are thinking about. And certainly, you know, when it comes to problems, you don't even plan. You just find yourself, for example, if you are meditating about the disease you have, the sickness that has attacked you, you will imagine, you will think, see yourself going to the hospital, you see yourself die on that sick bed. You will see yourself being carried from the hospital to the mortuary. From the mortuary, you will see your family coming to pick your corpse, and then they will carry you, uh, take you to that village of yours. In you will see yourself being entered into that grass searched house, and then you see people cooking porridge for others to drink, and then you will begin meditating and thinking of the neighbors who bring the cassava, who bring the beans. You are meditating, and then you will be there thinking about the, 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 that hour, the barrio hour, which, which they will announce, and you will meditate and think, will they tell it on radio? Will it be over the TVs? And you are thinking, and you are asking yourself, who will be the pastor on my barrio service? Who will be the pastor? And then you imagine in which case they will make for you. Those are all imaginations. Can you imagine? Those are all imaginations. How I, my simple request is this. As we live in the word, take all that effort. Invest it in the word of God. Think about the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. And you see the power it will do. 
you will come out healed. You come out set free. You just place the word you seek and you place the word God is my healer. God is my healer. Even when the doctors will come and bring all sorts of reports, you will certainly say deep in your heart, deep in your spirit, God is my healer. God is my savior. He will save me. He is my redeemer. So, those are all contents of the word of God. That's why I want to urge you, in whatsoever you do, meditate on the word of God. Meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it. Think through it. And it certainly says, be careful to do everything written in the word of God. Be careful to do. Put in practice. Put in practice. As you read the word, practice it. Carry it out. May God bless you. So with that simple sharing, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you lead us, you guide us, you enable us to live by the word in whatsoever we do. May you touch our hearts, our minds, our thinking, that we'll be able to hide your word in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God richly bless you. Amen.